Might be worth a look. Greetings. Ah, uh, that's not what I wanted. These lands are free of show. I hope I can say the same of myself. Soon enough. An army stampeded through here. A big army.
<clears throat> what do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadow Hearts. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. Man. You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young. Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come, but not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. There's that advancement. 
quest line. Oh. Oh, excuse me. here and my father i heard what happened what he'd become by killing him you set him free you set alien free and me not on purpose or not with the intent to deceive i've been trying to make sense of it all Catherick Thorm is, was, my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? That's exactly it. And I tell you, I took one look at her and I just knew she was it. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... and... This is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how or why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years, that my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them. And myself. No matter what. It's all out in the open now. And with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing. Rest. I'm grateful for your help. Your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long, but I'm grateful for a safe place to, well, just to be. All right. Press the on. curse has been lifted. The land's cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least, you have triumphed.
Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Kethrick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. Oh. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. If I butt in. The gate is closed. As is Casador. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me back. Truth. I don't know whether we can defeat Cazador. Not unless we can figure out more about what he's plotting. 
I think we should track down my fellow spawn. I'm not exactly looking forward to a reunion, but perhaps they'll know something. If we can find them, we can force them to tell us what he's been doing since I was gone. And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the dream visitor's protection. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. You will finally have the chance to destroy Gortash. But what then? What fires will still burn in you when he is extinguished? Will you liberate the true souls from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. do this. 
this without you. Knees high. Gestavsky! Vorotheus! We will all become thralls. What is it? to the skull. Let me work my magic. I need you, now! It's not over. Come to the skull. What a charmer. The skull! Come to the skull! Oh, 
chance. Let's go. By the one true sky, what is this madness? The Githyanki is the source of our protection against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. The Honor Guard. Eliminate them. My force is awakened by their assault. But with your help, we can turn this around. Destroy the guard. I will subdue their master. Together, we can turn the tide.
right time. On the move. Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of Mind Slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. I serve the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call me Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. In 
indeed. His hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prism. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. I do not have the privilege of knowing the answer, but the consequences are clear enough. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead, but as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. Vlacketh is eternal. My people would not be swayed by this... this false prince. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid. A sworn enemy, just like me. I'm glad you think so. I agree. But there is one thing that you have that I do not. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. Yours continues to limit you. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain 
if you embrace your latent illithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle, while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. Do we do it? Do we do it? Do we do it? Oh, we do it. Do it! Scruff! Whatever this geek offers is no gift to you. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Shadowhawk. Quickly! We should wait for her. Whatever it is, save it for now. If you desire conversation, please do find someone else.
saddle up. Hey there. Orpheus. Gith's only son. He lives. The tainted blood of the mother. The traitor prince. The Laxerai. And even more powerful still. It said he could bring a thousand Githyanki to their knees with one command. Listen close. The Empress spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Lacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current Queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was... is Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlacketh I. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the traitor's with us, controlled by that repugnant Illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlacketh's dominion to his Geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. Entirely. Vlakith Karsivim Hrathkrashet. Only in Vlakith may we find light. This is the creed. I will not abandon all 10,000 protocols over one sovereign secret. Orpheus is not Githyanki. He is a geth puppet cloaked in Githyanki's skin, and the most powerful mind master known to my people. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more. And one by one, the plains would fall to the Geich. What about him? Chuck. I'm embarrassed you'd fall for such an obvious trick. You probably believe the illithid swaddle about Vlakith usurping Gith's throne as well. The astral prison contains not one, but two atrocities. They will use you and abuse you at every opportunity. There is one truth, Vlakith's truth. Everything else is apostasy. As loathsome as it is, the Empress slipped one fact into its slurry of lies. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. One talent of many that drove the Illithids to enthrall him. The Prince is a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Vlakith was no fool. Why destroy a weapon like that, when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? Orpheus's honor guard, loyal to the end, and trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. So loyal, so beguiled, they were blind to his treason. The Honor Guard's deaths were inevitable, as is the death of their gay enthralled prince. Mm. 
My queen would demand I slay her greatest enemy. I could not be more certain. Vlakith has a plan, and she knows what part I must play. And she cannot reward me if I hand the Empire to the illithid thrall called Orpheus. Protocol 301. Neither death nor undeath may be a hindrance to Vlakith's blessing. Vlakith will know my unfaltering faith. Neither death nor the Absolute will keep me from accomplishing my duty. Fine with me. I'm listening. A pleasure more carnal than the smell of a fresh kill. One day, I will achieve ascension, and I will revel in the psalm sung in Vlakit's court. Until then, you will be my ecstasy. Yes. <sighs> 